feeder links, feeder booms, they've been out for a long, long time now. The Europeans have been using them for years, but they first came into our fishing when the Feeder World Championships started in Belgium, probably eight to 10 years ago now. And the rule was in the match that you needed to use a 50 centimetre hook length. And on venues where fish are feeding heavy and you want to catch them quickly, a 50 centimetre hook length is not an advantage. So some of the lads come up with the idea of fishing like a big boom, so the feeder was closer to the hook. This worked really, really well. But whilst they were doing this and using this, they found out that it was really tangle free, which was the birth of the feeder link. Feeder links allow you to fish a free running rig in Paternoster style, so it gives you a massive advantage. And also, by having a free running rig, you meet lots of rules and regulations, especially in wheel champs and in lots of feeder matches over here in the UK. Other advantages of the feeder links are they create a nice boom, which help you cast more accurately and truer. They help you create more distance because you've got a nice stiff boom behind the feeder, allowing you to put more power through that rod and more power through the feeder. And most of all, they avoid tangles. I'm also convinced the separation the link creates between your main line and the feeder helps you lose less fish. By not having the feeder direct on your main line, it softens the blow when the fish is banging and crashing around as you're bringing it in. So it helps you avoid those horrible hook pulls. There's many different feeder links available, all different types, sizes and patterns, but the Tackle Guru team, we kept it nice and simple. We looked at what we were trying to achieve and we went to the drawing board and created a link that we think is very versatile and really easy to use. The main features include a two-way bead, which is made from a self-lubricating plastic, which is very, very durable. This will allow the feeder on its link to slide up and down the line really smoothly and help you hit more bites. Moving down, a lot of links are made from fluorocarbon. We've used a boom material, which is a really strong, durable material that can be crimped. But by using crimps, you create two places where tangles can happen. So we've used a real stiff shrink tube over the top of the whole link to keep it nice and stiff and safe from tangles. Then at the base, we've got a small link. It's important on these feeder links to keep everything small and neat. You don't want anything interfering with the performance. So a small link doesn't weigh the link down when it's on your main line. It keeps it nice and boomed out and it's also nice and subtle so there's less resistance. There's three feeder links in the range, a two, a two and a half inch, and a three inch. We've kept it nice and simple. For me personally, I like to use the long link for my long distance fishing, and that's purely because it creates a stiffer boom behind the feeder, and also gives you nice separation at those longer distances. The two and a half, the one in the middle of the range, is just perfect all round. Good all round, gives you enough separation, and also helps with your casting. The short one is brilliant for all your short work where you're fishing very quickly and you want to avoid tangles. The small separation just avoids all of that. It's really, really good. Free in the range, nice and simple. Long one for long distance, medium for medium, short for short. <laughs>